Hi, and thank you for watching. In this video, we're discussing automation using Humio's GraphQL API. Humio has chosen GraphQL for our main API because we believe it offers significantly more flexibility for API clients. GraphQL allows you to precisely specify the data you require, which allows you to get to call a single endpoint to get everything you need. This makes creating integrations and clients for Humio much easier. Simply submit queries to retrieve data and mutations to modify the data. And you don't need any special tools to use GraphQL. GraphQL is HTTP based and all you need is curl to send requests. Responses are returned as JSON. One more thing, if you're new to Humio, you may want to check out the Intro to Humio playlist on Humio's YouTube channel. Specifically, the last video on CLI and APIs for an introduction to GraphQL as well as our REST API and the Humio command line interface. We do have tools. Humio has a built-in interactive API explorer bundled with each installation. You can find it at the link specified here. Just change your server and port to match your Humio instance. Another useful tool is the GraphQL Voyager project. Represent any GraphQL API as an inter interactive graph with GraphQL Voyager. For our demonstration topic, we will be adding LDAP groups to Humio, a common administrative task. Our first step is to start with the interactive API explorer here we can prototype our mutation and do the first one manually. Once we verify that our mutation is working, we can put it into a curl command that can be executed as a script. Here is a finished mutation that we will use to add a group matching the associated LDAP common name. We will create this step by step in our demonstration. So here is our GraphQL API Explorer. We will start with the docs. Since we're interested in groups, we'll go to our docs and look under what it gives us. You'll notice two root types, query and mutation, that we discussed earlier. We will use the mutation. Now since we're interested in something to do with groups, we'll just do a search on groups. And notice we're first taken to add group, which is exactly what we want. So let's select on that. There are two parameters it needs for arguments, a display name that will show up in the Humio user interface and a lookup name that will map to the LDAP. So let's go over and see what we can do in the API Explorer. As we start typing mutation, which is the first thing we want to do. We are presented with some type ahead options and we'll, we'll just use that to make our typing simpler. We've got a mutation and we want to use this add group. I've copied and pasted my parameters to make the typing a lot easier for the lengthy ones. So as I type add group, notice I'm given all three parameters and we're just going to use the display name and the lookup name. Also notice that after we type that in, there's a red line underneath the add group. That's our indication that something's just not quite right. More than likely, a non-scalar value is being requested. So if we dig deeper into the type of the add group function, we will see that it is a type of group which is definitely not a scalar. So as we dive into group, we can see that there's probably a lot more things here that are scalars. So let's start using these and adding these to our query. We'll type in group and notice it has a red line, so it wants more. And then we'll just use the ID, which is a string and a scalar. And that gets us free of our red lines. Let's test this out. And before we do, let's go over here to our organization, settings, 
and notice that we have no groups. Go here and run this. Looks like we've got an, an ID returned. If we go here and go back to groups, we'll see that a group has indeed been added. Now let's remove that group so we can add it via a curl command next. The group is successfully removed. And here's the mutation now that we want to put in a curl command. If we go to this slide here, we can see how this will actually fit into a curl command. You use your curl with some your curl command with some standard parameters of verbose and expost. Specify a content type, an authorization string that has a token and the actual server we're going to hit, and then the query, which in this case is a mutation highlighted in blue. And that's the same thing as we entered above in, in, the, gra in the GraphQL API Explorer. Notice a couple things about this string though in curl. First of all, double quotes are used in some places and single quotes are in the other. Under all the dash H parameters, those are all double quotes. I've had mixed reviews on different operating systems using those with single quotes. And the dash D, which is the data payload parameter, we, that's is all in single quotes. And then once you get inside the the uh, mutation, you need to escape with a backslash or double quotes. To test this out, I'll bring up a Unix shell. And there's my curl command. We'll run it. You see it's pretty verbose, giving us a lot of HTTP information. Go back to our organizational settings and there the group has been created with curl. I've got one more thing to do with this so I'm going to remove it so we can add not only this group but a bunch of groups which is what an admin would do. Remove that. Before I do that let me pass along one other tip to get you started. A lot of browsers, Chrome included, which is shown here, offer a set of developer tools and in there you can actually capture what has been done in the browser which is what we're doing here so when the query is executed once that query is executed you can highlight over it with the right mouse and do a copy as curl and that will get you started on your curl formatting I'll go back here clear and I'm going to type a command that executes all these different, that adds all these different groups to Humio. And now when I go back to Humio and go into groups, I have all my groups. This is exactly what an admin would do. Instead of adding things manually here, you want this scripted. Adding groups is only one of the many things you can do in Humio's GraphQL API. And it's, it's designed for developers and highly used by our clients for automation. We hope you found this helpful and we thank you for watching and hope you'll return for more Humio instructional videos. Thank you.